Well, it's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And this week, it's also an episode of Pens on the Road because I am at Slim Butte in Riva, South Dakota. So let's dive into it. All right, we'll just have to just see how this thing goes, but here I am a slim, on top of Slim Butte. Got a lot of wind up here, but I am on top of Slim Butte and uh, quite the view behind me. I'll, I'll turn it around and pan so you can look at it with a my face, but so worth it. So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, I visited a really cool place. What do you think? <laughs> so, let's dive into the pens. So, from left to right, I have my Lamy 80, a Schaefer Legacy 2, a Geha 722, a Waterman Karen, a Senator air quotes, Silver Fox, because I don't know its model number, so I made up a name, <laughs> Lamy Safari, Nakaya Decapod Twist, and a ladies, or sorry, Essential Pen Ladies Pen. As always, I'm going to film the writing sample in this beautiful cognitive surplus notebook. And I will just add that, uh, I did uh, some experiments with exposure, so uh, we'll see if it works. <laughs> I, I really don't know how this is going to turn out. So my first pen is this Lamy 80, which seems to be an ancestor of the um, Lamy 2000. Now I'll just say that uh, the Lamy 2000 is uh, taking a break because uh, somebody decided he's bored with Califolio Noir ink. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you won't see that pen this week, but to open it up, I can tell that, yeah, I've written a lot with it. Beautiful nib. And kind of interesting feed. And, yeah, the nib has got this whole uh, stubbish thing going on, because it's a double broad. So, Lamy. 80. Double broad. And the ink in it is Roshizuku Amairo. Very uh, attractive sky blue type of ink. I have several sky blue inks, but this is uh, probably my favorite of them all. Just a very happy, cheerful, nice color. And of course, with this nib, you get some interesting effects. Hey, the furnace came on. Did you notice? <laughs> I don't know if you can tell anymore. Um, it's getting dark outside, but uh, it's raining. We so desperately need rain, so I'm really excited about the rain. Um, it's probably going to turn into snow overnight, and yeah, I am totally okay with that. We are so desperate for moisture here. My next pen is a Schaefer Legacy 2. Uh, this one is a medium nib, and it's a 1990s uh, release. Kind of a, well, kind of a fun pen. Not as, uh, maybe not quite as fun as that, but fun. So this is a Schaefer legacy 2 and do you like that nice purple color i do uh the nib i'm sorry the ink in it is a ro shizuku a ro <laughs> jeez shizuku <laughs> good gravy um mirasaki shikabu which is uh named after a japanese poet Sorry, I was suddenly questioning how to spell that. And I misspelled it. There we go. She. Ki. 
Boo. Wow. That was messy. Uh, but just a very, very attractive purple. And as a bonus, wait till you see what's in the next pen. My next pen is a Geha 722, which is a another really nice pen. Um, one of my favorites of the Geha brand, but uh, I, I... Okay, do I admit this? <laughs> like, I need another pen, but uh, I, I recently ordered a Geha pen from Proto Pens, and uh, I'm ridiculously excited to see how it writes. <laughs> But anyway, this puppy has been sitting for a while, and I pulled it out again this week. has an oblique, double-broad nib. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, there you can tell. So, Geha 7... Oh, look at the purple! Yeah, same ink. Let's see if I can actually spell everything correctly this time without stuttering. So this is Iro Shizuku. Murasaki. Ah, I misspelled it. Shikabu. Okay, only one typo this time. Um, and it, it's just kind of fun to see in this 1970s pen how differently the ink looks. I mean, it's brighter. It's uh, how just different. And that's part of the fun of this hobby is just, you know, you, you get an ink in one pen, you're like, eh. You get it in another pen, you're like, ooh, sexy. So uh, a lot of fun. Okay, that's my uh, oblique test thing. <clears throat> Speaking of sexy. <laughs> Here comes my Waterman Karen with the gorgeous, gorgeous, um, I forgot the name of the finish, but I love it. Um, and, and of course, how can you not love that finish? And yes, I know because of my weird lighting system, I've got a, a bright line on it, but, uh, and then you open it and it has this, uh, interesting nib, this inlaid nib. And this is a broad nib. So Waterman Correct. There we go. It always makes me happy to write with this pen. So Waterman Karen with a broad nib. The ink in it is Diamine Skull and Roses. Which is just a fun name for an ink. And if you like rock and roll, you may possibly recognize the name. There we go. And we'll do our swatchy thing. But yeah, what a fun ink. And I really hope that camera B here is doing well. I have not experimented too much with this yet, so uh, I, I discovered I could do manual exposure on the camcorder, so like, well, why haven't you done that before? Because one of the things that's always bothered me with that camera is, is how the exposure changes. Just, you know, do I have white paper behind it? Do I have, you know, the desk behind it? You know, it just totally changes. You know, I bring the pen close to the camera with my hands there, and it's just Ah! So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, experimenting. Trying to do better. So this is my Senator Silver Fox. The George Clooney of my collection, I guess. Because I don't know what it's really called. Has kind of a fun nib. Actually kind of reminds me of some of my Caveco nibs, but not very flexy. Uh, this has been my daily writer all week while the Lamy is waiting to get washed out and get a new ink in it. And yeah, I'm having fun. 
this is a great pen to write with. This is not uh, a great, oops, forgot the fox. This is not a great pen to show off an in ink. This is a great pen for writing. Uh, the ink in it is Pelican 4001 Royal Blue. I have about a liter of this ink to go through. <laughs> Um, in a non-pandemic year, I may do a fountain pen giveaway if I build up the selection enough. Um, I have a liter of royal blue and I have a liter of brilliant black. And uh, it would be nice to get through those bottles before I retire. <laughs> but uh, just a very good writer type of pen. Right, my next pen has lately been my envelope labeler. <laughs> this is my Lamy Safari. Boy, I look at the previous screen. I hope the white balance isn't as off as it looks. We'll find out, I guess. I'm not going to refilm it. So Lamy Safari has a fine nib in it. And this ink is Noodler's Fox which is a permanent, he called, uh, Nathan Tardif calls it bulletproof, red ink. So we'll see. Um, I've been using this on my envelopes. When uh, this runs dry, I'll switch to something else. I've got uh, a couple of bulletproof inks that are in the one ounce bottles. And, you know, I'm trying to, well... Like I've said, I'm trying to write down the ink collection. <laughs> and I don't want to do it by disposal down the sink. So, writing it is. So, yeah, the uh, Califolio Noir will be back. My penultimate pen is the Nakaya Decapod Twist. With just such a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. And a fun soft fine nib this is one of the pens that you bought for me by uh, watching these videos you know i can't quite bring myself to do the paypal thing or any of that but uh uh advertising dollars don't seem to bother me so it has a soft fine nib which, you know, if you don't want to buy a Nakaya, buy a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib. I just really like that nib. Uh, the ink in this is Ackermann. Grunmark Smaragd. Whoops. N-M-A-R-K-T. Yipe! Okay, so somebody mentioned that uh, there's a lot of feedback with platinum nibs. Yep. But I enjoy it. Ooh, I got a little fuzzy in the nib there. And it's gone. Okay. And the last one. I did a video this week. Um, this is not the pen I'm giving away. This is... Um, this one's a bugger. Uh, this is the Isco nib that uh, suffers ink starvation. The uh, Bach nib I cleaned out, and I've, I'm, well, I'm going to box it up tonight because I'm hoping to get to the post office tomorrow. But you'll get to at least see the potential of this amazing Isco nib if I can get it to stop starving to death. So this is a central pen. Oh, we're railroading already. It's all right. Isco, because I don't know the size, but that's the brand. And the ink in it is a Royal Shizuku. Yu Yake. And I can tell that it's getting lighter. So I have the feeling that when I do the little swatcher doodle, yipe, yeah, uh, that's when the ink starvation is going to come into play. Yeah. 
So that's why I didn't end up sending it to her because uh, quits writing. Grr. Of course, I can't leave you there. Here's my other one with the Isco nib. This is how I know it can be so awesome. So we'll do Central Pen Ladies Pen. What's that? Yeah, it's an Isco nib. See how beautifully this is writing? I better put red on this one. It's doing a tremendous job. Okay, did get a railroad there. But, uh, you know, I've had reports from some people who have purchased uh, other versions of my beloved, um, the, the brown one that I love so much, the 1008. Oh, holy cow. Okay, did not see that coming because uh, I've written full pages with this pen. That could be the problem. It could be this one's out of ink. Yipe, though. This is embarrassing. This was supposed to really show up, this other one. <laughs> that can't be out. Okay, but the other thing you'll notice is that, yeah, it ran, out, it ran dry there, but refilled right away. So, uh, as far as writing on the page, this one's great. Uh, as far as doing these swatches, Maybe not so much. So, may have a little to learn here. Okay, so uh, the rest of this video, we're going to spend some time at Slim Butte, South Dakota. And uh, I went to two different spots. I stopped at the site of a battle. Um, there was a lot more to Slim Butte than I expected. And uh, yeah, some of this is going to get historical. Some of it's just scenery. Some of it is me musing you know, on the spot. So, uh, expect a random of sort of audio here, but, uh, hope you enjoy. And as always, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And this is a spot just like 50 miles from my house, uh, which is North Dakota close. Have you explored your area? and found the amazing spots. Let us know down in the comments. So, as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'm not going to say goodbye because let's head off to South Dakota. <laughs> Here I am at the castles part of Slim Butte. Slim Butte is part of the cave hills of South Dakota, which, you know, they're tall buttes, and then they have a ponderosa pine forest on the top, and it's prairie around them. Uh, kind of a clay and limestone type landscape and here the castles is a rock formation that looks vaguely like abandoned castles slim butte is also home to a battle uh, a little background it's actually part of the great sioux war so the 1868 treaty of fort laramie guaranteed lakota ownership of the black hills as well as some further lands but um <laughs> we discovered gold there whoops so suddenly it didn't matter you know they even sent a delegation to general or i'm sorry to president ulysses s grant to say hey you're encroaching on our lands and he just said yeah too bad about the gold there and he refused to enforce it and uh so war ensued which definitely would be a topic for a future video um but one of the big culminating events of the war was of course custer's last stand and, uh, or the L Battle of Little Bighorn, if you prefer, which was a major defeat, which enraged the U.S. public and government. Uh, so, in August 1st of 1876, General Crook began, who, Camp Crook is named for him, began to look for those who took part in the battle. And he moved northeast to the Little Missouri River, which is close to where I live, and then began moving toward the Black Hills. 
on what they call the horse meat march. 2,200 men, uh, because he wanted to teach us the Sioux a lesson in his words. And he, yeah, and here's where the battle occurred, or it's the memorial to it. Uh, he ran out of food and supplies, and they actually had to begin eating their horses as the horses gave out. Um, 150 troopers were sent to obtain supplies on September 7th of 1876, and on the afternoon of the next day came upon Lakota Chief American Horses Village with 37 lodges and only 30 or 40 warriors, very close to present-day Riva, South Dakota, which, as you can guess, isn't much. So they attacked the village, took the supplies, and sent messengers back to General Crook, and he moved in quickly. Uh, chief American Horse, who was the chief of the village, had retreated to, nearby, to a nearby ravine and expected some relief from nearby villages. Well, battle ensued. Uh, chief American Horse was shot in the abdomen. Re he refused medical treatment and died several days later. And we know how this ends. They didn't get the land back. So I'm going to revisit this topic soon, this summer, when I have some time to travel. And yeah, we're going to analyze this history just a little bit more. But I'll give you a taste, and then I thought I would take you on a short, another hike I did on Slim Butte. Different part of Slim Butte now. It's just been a steady uphill climb, so I hope the view's worth it. I feel like this holds some promise for a view. Well, let's find out. That last bit was really steep and I'm out of breath. And at first I thought, well, that was a waste of a climb. But then I looked behind me. Yeah, I'm going that way. So I think it was worth walking up that steep incline and back here. It's a very narrow view, but uh, I think it was worth it. Once you do get up here, it's pretty level on the top of the butte. Nice walk, forested, some clearings. I like it. <laughs> Might be sorry, but I'm going to walk on just a bit. I don't know how far, but I'm going to walk on a little ways. I could have driven back here, it was open to vehicular traffic, but I think with a Toyota Camry, I'm just as happy I walked. And I'm healthier this way too. It's looking pretty promising again. Uh, we'll see what's at the top of this rise. And maybe that'll be a good place to turn around, I don't know. So up here, I'm definitely on top. And it continues on, pretty level. Let's just do that much. I have the feeling we're coming up on the end of the public land, that fence there. We'll see what that white sign says, but I seems like a good spot to turn around. This may be one of those public-private things, but the sign actually says, keep these gates closed. Oh, look. So, no, somebody did not. I'll see if I can close it, but I don't know how long it's been laying there either. And I did my best for him. I couldn't get that bottom post into that. I think this has been laying here all winter and it's just too deformed. But I tried. Uh, looks open that way, but I know it's forested. And yeah, we're at the top don't quite have the scenic view I'd hoped for. So I might come back here again. Maybe I'll get my mountain bike fixed. I, you know, it's nice. That first climb is pretty steep on a bike, but uh, it'll be pretty steep going down too. But I don't know, I, it's, once you get up here, it's kind of nice for exploring on a mountain bike. Cause I'm not one of those that's got to splash through mud puddles. I, I like a pretty sedate ride. So we'll see. But I got to get the bike fixed first. I was thinking also, uh, the last time I was here, I didn't come here, but out, out on the highway I'd gone to Rapid City. It was in February. I desperately needed a new winter coat. Bought it and decided to come back by way of Slim Butte, which is the highway 
that I'm parked on, uh, Highway 79, and uh, took some pictures of myself down at the bottom of the butte. I uh, got some nice pictures of the cliffs. Uh, it was that perfect golden hour. And about a month later, the pandemic started. Great. Um, but at that time, you know, the light started to fade, but I just thought to myself, I am coming back here. I'm going to hike here over Easter break. Well, <laughs> by the time Easter break 2020 happened, we were into the pandemic. School had been closed and I didn't want to go anywhere. So this has been a hike I've been wanting to do. I'm glad I finally did it. You know, I do have my mask for some reason. Not that I'm seeing any people, but you know, uh, but I'm just enjoying being outdoors and I'm glad I finally did this. I don't know how scenic it is, but that's my walk back through the forest. So one thing that's kind of surprised me, I haven't seen or heard much wildlife. I scared out a mule deer while I was hiking up here. But other than that, I don't hear many birds. You know, I've seen some insects, but nothing. <laughs> Saw a lot of antelope and mule deer when I was driving down here in the prairie, but up here, nothing. And I'm, other than when I'm talking to you, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> so I don't know what's up. Maybe they don't like my shirt. You might be wondering about stuff like this, you know, and part of it is just to clear out for uh, the trail and stuff, but part of it is they're actually trying to suppress fire. You know, they put it all in one spot and then when they can burn it, you know, when there's lots of snow on the ground, they come around and burn it. Um, not this year, of course, because we had a very bare winter, but you see then there is less fuel if a fire does get going. They like to take out a bunch of the younger trees, which they haven't really done here. But you know, it's to make it more natural. Because this kind of forest, really as dry as it is here, everything is too close together. So when a fire gets going, it just takes it all out. Whereas if the trees are more spread apart and the fire really doesn't jump up into the upper branches, it just clears out the basement, so to speak, and we're good to go. And then the way is cleared for a few new trees to sprout up. You're gonna have to put up with some shaky cam because I'm zoomed in here. But you see that scrape way up there? I was thinking maybe that was deer, you know, with their antlers trying to take off the velvet, but no, I'm pretty sure it's porcupine. And now what was a long uphill slog is gonna be a long downhill slog. Let's see if I get as out of breath going down. I might get more because you're kind of holding yourself back when you go downhill. It was a little chill this morning. Uh, now, the, su the sun is kind of burning off the cloud cover. Uh, it was around the 40s, 42 when I started out. Right now, I almost want to shed this shirt. I'm getting kind of toasty. So, it's supposed to get uh, pretty warm today. So, uh, I'm glad I scheduled this for the morning because uh, I'm just more successful and more energetic in the morning. So now I've accomplished my big thing for the day. I can <laughs> spend the rest of the day correcting tests or work on the class that I'm taking online. If you do decide to come hiking out here, uh, just remember that in the summer it is brutally hot here and it's generally dry. So make sure you bring water for one thing. Uh, make sure you study your maps. So you're careful of the whole private public land thing. Um, appropriate footwear. I'm not wearing appropriate footwear. Almost turned my ankle on a rock a little while back, which is what made me think of this. Uh, that would have been fun, trying to get out by myself because it's not like help is coming. And I suggest morning or evening hiking, especially in the summer because it's brutally hot during the day and it's not like you're that sheltered. So uh, well, those are just a couple of things. I suppose they're pretty standard hiking things. Actually, on the topic of uh, getting injured, it's not too far from here where there was a guy who was mauled by a bear and was left for dead by his friends, and he didn't die. <laughs> so he ended up uh, basically crawling to civilization. Um, there was a movie made about it a few years ago. I'm trying to remember the actor's name. I haven't seen it, so, you know, no promises as to quality. Um, 
Leonardo DiCaprio, I think. Uh, could be the first name that popped into my head, but I think it was him. But anyway, it actually took place quite near here. So one time there were grizzly bears. Uh, not something I worry about now when I'm out hiking, but you know, <laughs> there's bobcat, or not bobcats, uh, mountain lions uh, around here. Badgers get angry. Rattlesnakes definitely get frisky. So, you know, there's plenty of dangers to be aware of anyway. And we're back at Civilization again. I will look up the name of that movie and put it in the video somewhere. I, uh, there's no, no cell phone service where I'm at right now, so <laughs> you're just gonna have to wait. Okay, I'm sitting comfortably in the couch now, but the, the movie in question is The Revenant, and it did star Leonardo DiCaprio, so I got that part right. And it actually, he was attacked by the grizzly bear near uh, Lemon, South Dakota, which is near here. Um, I know I have talked about it in videos and we've gone to the petrified wood park that's there, but, uh, it might be kind of hard to find the video. So if I remember, I'll try to put that in the video description, but, uh, anyway, what, what a neat place. And the more I thought about it, you know, at first it's like, Oh, I'm not ready to talk about this battle. And then as I learn more about the battle, I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. This video does not do it justice. So I'm definitely going to revisit the area, get more footage. And, uh, and I want to visit some other areas too, because wow. Yeah. We've got a whole history there that really needs to be more widely known. So I think that'll be a good summer project for me. <laughs> not like I don't have enough summer projects, but what the heck, what's one more? And, uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll be hearing more about the Battle of Symbute and, uh, some of the other battles in the Great Sioux War. Um, it's an ugly history, but th th there's no getting around that. So, uh, yeah, I felt like I didn't do it justice here, even though I took a week extra to try to do it justice. And, uh, I'm not there. It needs more time. But I will say... Did you notice the graves? There's nothing there about the Native Americans who died. So, yeah, a lot more to talk about. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, Slim Butte is beautiful. And uh, definitely a place I can't believe I have not visited in all my time living here. So definitely going back. So we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.